this is Laura from Doggy U, and today we're going to be talking about the top five tips for going on a long road trip with your dog. And this video is for my friend Scott, who's going on a long road trip to Alabama with his dog Stella in a couple weeks. So I thought I'd share with you guys what I would tell him about going on a trip with your dog. And I have a lot of experience with this. This summer, in three weeks, we did a little over 8,000 miles with two energetic herding dogs, seeing seven national parks. We've also done four German Shepherds, one cattle dog, and two humans in a minivan down to Florida from Connecticut uh, in 24 hours. So, lots of experience everywhere from British Columbia down to Florida, up to Toronto, uh, hauling dogs everywhere, pet dogs, and service dogs. So I have a lot of experience with dogs on the road. So let's get into our top five tips for what to do with your dog on a long road trip so everybody is happy, healthy, and comfortable. Tip number one. Don't go for that long trip all at once to start with. Don't throw your dog in the van and say, hey, we're gonna drive for 15 hours, hope you do well. We don't wanna do that. We wanna start with short trips to your friends' houses, maybe a trip for the weekend a couple hours away, then maybe a six hour trip. You wanna really build up to that big trip if you can so that your dog isn't shocked the first time he has to sit in a car for a really long period of time. You'll also know your dog better. You'll know his tolerances, you'll know what he likes, you'll know how he settles in the car. And that's really what we want. We want a calm, relaxed dog Having short trips that go really well will help build up to that big, longer trip. Tip number two, exercise your dog first, okay? So if you know you're going on a really big trip tomorrow and you gotta leave at like 6 a.m., I'm gonna make sure that today he goes on a really long hike, he goes running with me, he goes biking, he does some type of very vigorous exercise a couple hours if he's tolerant of that and used to that type of thing so that he's tired for tomorrow. I really want to pre-exercise my dog. Now, if I'm leaving later in the afternoon, I'm going to do that exercise in the morning so that they're really tired on the day up. But sometimes you got to leave really early and that's not part of it, so exercise the day before. Don't leave them sitting in the house all day because I know you've got to pack and you're rushing around and doing stuff. Put the time in your calendar to exercise your dog first, then he'll be a more settled and relaxed partner as you drive down to wherever you're going. Tip number three, keep your dog safe in the car. The safest way for your dog to travel in most cars is in a crash-tested crate in your car away from the back. So you want to keep your dog in a crate if they'll tolerate it because it keeps them the most safe in the event of an accident. Nobody wants an accident to happen, but sometimes it does. And having your dog crated means that they don't become a projectile or go through your window. I know, it's a little dark, but it does happen and nobody expects it to happen. So if you can, crate your dog. The other reason to crate your dog is they tend to relax more and settle when they're in a confined space. Also, if you need to run into the store or get some gas, you know the dog isn't wandering around the car getting into trouble. So it keeps them safe, it keeps them protected, and it gives you the peace of mind knowing that your dog isn't getting into any trouble during the ride and they'll be more likely to relax in a crate. Now, if you can't crate your dog, you want to try and seatbelt your dog. You want to give some way that your dog is protected in the event of an accident and stays put when they need to. So you want to get a crash tested seatbelt. I'll put a couple links in the uh, description below of some seatbelts and some crates that I use with my own dogs, uh, but you should have some way to contain your dog on a road trip. Sitting on your lap while driving, not safe. Them stepping from the back into the front while you're driving can cause an accident. You want to make sure everybody in the car is safe, including your dog. Tip number four, bring a lot for your dog to do in the car. So that means chewing project. A chewing project is something like a Kong or a Marabone. That's what I'm gonna start out with when I've just been able to pull them out of the freezer. Then usually you're not gonna have a freezer with you. So then you can transition to something like bully sticks, tracheas, those kind of things that are gonna keep your dog entertained. Usually a Nylabone or something that's not as exciting as food isn't gonna do it for your dog. So you wanna bring something really engaging that they wanna chew on. So in those periods where they get a little bit of restless, you can say, hey, why don't you chew on this, have them calm down, relax, and they'll start associating this long road trip with something really awesome that they're doing. So definitely bring lots for your dog to do while they're stationary in the car. Last tip, tip number five, lots of bathroom breaks. So you wanna make stops. Every time you're getting gas or switching drivers, you wanna let your dog out to stretch their legs, take a bathroom break, and maybe have a little game of tug or frisbee. 
I also, when I'm on a long trip, try to find a park periodically for that longer leg stretching. So if your dog loves to play ball or loves to play frisbee, I'm gonna look on my GPS and see, hey, there's a park nearby. Let's stop there instead. Give the dog at least a, a walk around, put them on a long line, let them stretch their legs, play a little bit. They get themselves a little bit tired, you bring them back in and they sleep for the rest of the ride. So I do that every six, seven hours or so, but I do pee breaks more towards three or four hours just to make sure that he doesn't have to go to the bathroom and he's all set to keep going and isn't uncomfortable. Because we want our dog to feel happy going on road trips because the reason you're bringing them is probably because you love your dog and you want them to go everywhere with you. So you want to make sure that they've got their bathroom habits under control and also a little bit of exercise every time you stop. So that's it. Those are my top five tips for road tripping with your dog. So now get out there and have an adventure with your pup. If you like this video, comment below, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe. Happy training!